Hi guys, welcome back to Kitchen Wargamers and welcome back to my kitchen. Um, as I've said before, um, I'm looking at doing a, a winter theme um, so I can use it for fighting in Russia or the Ardennes Battle of Bulge and things like that. So, as I said in my King Tiger one, uh, I was going to do that um, with the winter uh, whitewash on it, um, but I'm just a bit nervous about doing it and wrecking it. So. I've tried on uh, some Russian vehicles and I think I'm pretty much uh, getting there now. So what I'm going to do is um, show you on this one, uh, T34, that has um, been pre-sprayed uh, black. And I've already done one, which is this one here. Whoops, not tore it off. And as you can see, I think it's looking quite good. So what I'm going to do on uh, this other one is show you how I get there and it's also a bit of practice for me as well. Um, so let's get cracking. Like I say it's been uh, pre-sprayed black because uh, like I want some of the track area staying uh, a bit more darker. Sorry in the background uh, I'm looking after my daughter's dog today so if you can hear some scratching about it's it's the, the dog Faye, the sheep dog. Um, yeah she likes hanging around me. So, okay, let's crack on anyway. Right, first of all, for my Russian tanks, um, I'm doing the same uh, color as my American ones as well, which is the olive green. So let's get going. Just got some uh, paint on my palette. Um, get dipping in. Now the, the brush I actually use is the Army Painter uh, Vehicle on Terrain brush uh, just gives me a bit more coverage okay so let's get going so we're putting this all over the hull try and get it into uh, all the nooks and crannies again just like I did with the um, the King Tiger you get the base paint on first and then you go from there but obviously the the russians and the allies didn't tend to have uh, camouflage like the germans did so it's basically all one color okay along the top and um, on the wheels um like i did on the king tiger again i just want it going in there not too bothered about the tracks again Okay, again, this will probably take two coats because of the dark under spray. But um, that's how we go. I'll carry on and get back to you as soon as that's done. Oh, by the way, I've done the same again. I've um, painted the turret separately. So that'll be done as well. Okay, see you in a sec, guys. Okay, welcome back, guys. Um, so, right, all the base coats done. Um, so I've got uh, all the green done. So what I'm going to do next is um, basically that's it for now. Um, I'm going to take it outside and I'm going to use um, a white spray primer. And basically what I'm going to do is aim directly from the top and spray it down the white. Um, and that will give me the whitewash effect. Um, so once I've done that, um, I'll show you that and then we'll take it from there. Okay, see you in a sec. Okay, welcome back guys. <clears throat> so here we have um, the T34. And like I said, what I did was spray the white from the top. <clears throat> so you just get over spray at the sides and on the wheels. Now I'm not going to be too bothered about the wheels actually because I think the, the slight overspray uh, gives it like a frosted look. Uh, and as you know, um, the way they painted tanks during the war for the winter, it was just a, a case of the tank crew getting a, a big pot of um, whitewash and just slapping it over the tank. And as time went on, obviously it wore off. Um, so that's the look we're going to go for. Okay, I'll, I'll do the turret uh, later, but I'll just concentrate on this. So what I'll do now is um, I'm going to do like a, a dry brush. Um, 
when I was doing the uh, the King Tiger and I was talking about dry brushing and like I said um, this video is for you know people who have been a bit afraid to do any painting or haven't done it or they're just starting out and when I was talking about dry brushing I may not have you may not know what that means so I'll just show you on my palette so here's the palette so what dry brushing basically is you, you get your your paint put some on them now if you dip your brush straight in and start painting or put a bit of water in just to um, loosen up a bit so it uh, flows better that's just like normal painting but what dry brushing is you get your brush you dip in and then the paint that's on your brush, you try and get most of it off. So you're left, if you just go over your finger, a very thin amount of paint that you've, you've got to work in. So that's the effect I'm after. Just put that out of the way. So what I do now is I go around edges and um, bits of the vehicle. I'll just show you as we go along. So I'm just dabbling on. And this colour is a, the colour we use for the base. So it's basically like gives you a chipping effect. So like the, the base colors coming through the, the wash. So I'll go around all the edges, just tapping away. And you can go back and two on corners as well. Uh, and on slopey bits where the paint's wearing. Around the engine block. And bits on the top. And as you're getting less paint on your brush, what you do is you way down a bit further and just think about where people may have been standing or where the paints, you know, the whites wearing away. One more, a bit more on. Like I say, which, who, <laughs> sorry, which painter doesn't use their finger as a, a second palette? You've got to do it. Okay. Just keep going around all the edges. And say like on the corner of the track, just put a bit more on over there. Around the sides. More on the front here. And just keep going around. So you've got all the <clears throat> the edges um, covered and what you can also do is sort of like brush down and put a bit of thicker edging on now when I tried this out on some of the other tanks the little lights on the side I actually knocked a few off <laughs> being a bit too heavy handed so just be careful of that just go over it lightly okay here on this bit oh, that's a bit too much but just keep blending it in try not to get all the sides look the same um, because obviously wear and tear on things it's never the same one side to the other so you could add a bit more in say adding a bit more you could really lay it on thick in some corners or a bit more raised areas and just keep going round to till it looks okay and what it leaves you with it looks like the the white has chipped off so you go a bit heavy there and if it, you think it's a bit too much just glide back over So if you think this crew hatch, <coughs> excuse me, this is where the driver went in and out of the tank. And sometimes with the T-34s, um, there is a, a, a quite a good history with them. Probably one of the most famous tanks of the war. <clears throat> um, and they were mass produced. And as the Germans were invading Russia and getting over, you know, close to their factories, what they did was packed up the factories and just completely moved them out of the way. Uh, materials were getting less and less 
and to make them quicker as well they, they sometimes mix, mix parts or missed parts off the vehicles so it was not uncommon for the driver to actually have no seat so what they'd do is um, get a load of blankets or the coat or something and pack it the best they could and sit on that um, so which couldn't be too uncomfortable uh, too comfortable I should say but um, yeah the idea of the Russians was just mass produce them get them out there and throw them into to combat uh, and what they used to do as well if after a tank battle if they'd won um, they would take all the scraps of tanks and send them back to factories as well and use the bits off them uh, and just mash them together basically uh, some of the weld lines uh, well welded uh, some of the pieces back together um, there was no finesse in it um, you could just see they just welded it up and left it at that uh, no tidying up um, you know they didn't look uh, professional um, but they did the job the t-34s um, and like i say the most uh, i think the most mass-produced tank uh, they did variants um, you know from the the, the main hull itself uh, put different um, guns and turrets on the top um, but basically all the same again just all rush through the system uh, just to get them out there fighting the Germans and um, the Germans just couldn't keep up with it <laughs> okay just keep going till uh, obviously don't get rid of all the white a bit more dry brushing on the, the wheels here around and about but like I say that white overspray just gives it a bit more of an icy look okay so i'm going to do the same with the uh, the turret and um, then i'll show you the next stage after that okay guys see you in a bit okay welcome back guys so <clears throat> this is the weathering done on the snow effect um, excuse me voice <clears throat> Don't know what it is, but every time I speak, I dry up. Um, yeah, so here's another one that I've done. Keep knocking the turret up. The turret on this one's not very um, very stable, not like the others that lock in. So that's a T-34 variant with uh, the bigger gun, <coughs> more of a, an anti-tank killer. Um, so yeah, looks okay, doesn't it? So what I do, um, like you see on here, I've got the engine blocks done and they've got a spare track on the front there. Um, I'll just show you quickly on this how I go about that. So what I use um, for the engine block, I used to use uh, just pure black, but now I use the, um, the Vallejo black brown just for the, you know, like engine blocks. Um, I just like the effect of it. So I'll put some of that on my palette. And a bit of water because I want it to um, seep in a bit. Okay, so being careful, just go inside the engine block. Like that. Bit more water. So the water I'm adding is just make it a bit shyer. Not quite like a wash, but almost there, just so it seeps in better. And you get more control of the flow as well. Okay, and there's some just on here as well. One side and the other. You can tell how much I'm concentrating by when I go quiet. <laughs> around that there we go just uh, take the turret off a sec and also um, the spare bit of track and um, like I say I usually do pure black but on these rush ones I quite, quite like the, uh, the effect of the black brown now in the King Tiger, obviously I did all the corners and everything, but I think just leaving bits of white um, 
adds to like a, an icy effect. So we'll get it all in. There we go. Okay, just clean your brush off. Okay, you got an MG uh, full mounted MG here. So I'm just going to do that with the, the silver like a, I do with all my weapons. Now if you notice during the war as well, if you look at any um, coloured photographs, all, all the weapons are like um, got a, like a black colour to them um, and not silver. But I think adding the silver and then the black wash just makes it stand out a bit more um, rather than just like a, you know, as models just as uh, a black little blob um, you're probably wondering what it is but I always put that little bit of silver on um, okay so basically that is it um, I'm not going to wait for the uh, this paint to dry but what I'll do again is I'll put a black wash over where I've done the um, black brown and over the gun as well so I'm calling that Get it back together. That done. As you can see, it works quite well. Um, took a bit of practice. Uh, I've done a few other vehicles, um, like you saw. Let's move that one. This one, so you can see where it's had the the black wash on it. Hopefully, and some uh, transfers put on. I'm just waiting for um, a matte spray varnish. Um, that Games Workshop do, and um, that's on its way being delivered to me, just to spray over and it will dull these off so they're not shiny. There you go. And I've also done an IS2. Made this one a bit more grubbier. There we go. See what I mean about the white over uh, spray? Just gives it a bit of an icy look to it, rather than just leaving it pure black. And the KV-1 as well. This is the one that has the, uh, the double turret. Okay, so I was happy with them. Um, so I did an experiment on a couple of uh, German tanks before I do my King Tiger because uh, I'm nervous about doing this on that so I don't want to ruin this paint scheme but I've had a, a couple of uh, Panthers and I never take them you know out on the battlefield um, because of the point system so at maximum I'll, I'll take two I've got three of them made up so this one um, what I did uh, you can see the original camo underneath I put on like a white camo pattern all around it and then I sprayed it again from the top but just after I sprayed it what I did was um, get a toothbrush and uh, wet it and just give a scrape round to bring some of the white off so you can see still see the German camo underneath now if the the tank was all one color I would do the same as I did with the Russians I'd go over with the base color again um, doing stippling and dry brushing but because of the the camo pattern I, I like you know, you like to see it because obviously, like I say, it's a whitewash. They, they just washed over the tanks. So just go over a bit of um, water, not taking too much off, but just enough so you can just see the, the camo scheme underneath. And I'm quite happy with that. So I tried again on another tank. Uh, this was the, um, the German Marder. Uh, same again, I did um, like a, a white camel pattern, but on this one what I did was um, I did a black ink over the white um, Just to give it a bit more depth um, So you can see look because there's a lot of rivets on this one um, Basically, I, I like this. This is um, a pack 40 on wheels uh, and I love pack 40s and um, so yeah, I did that one. And again, from the top, I give it a gentle light uh, spray of the white just to give it a, an icy effect. Um, so yeah, I'm quite happy with that. So let me know in the comments, guys, uh, what you think about these vehicles. Um, let me know which one you think is the, the best for the Germans. 
either the Smarder or my, uh, my Panther. And if you like them both, I'll probably um, get a bit of courage and do my King Tiger. It's so like I say, um, I've got the winter map coming, so I can do like, um, you know, winter in both sides of the west and the east. Um, never done it before, um, so I'm looking forward to it. Now, also, you know, my, my terrain, I've got um, the mats that I use for um, fields and um, the hedges. So what I've done was tried a, an experiment out. And basically, this is one of my brown mats. Um, I've just sprayed from the top uh, with the white spray again, um, but focusing on different areas just to give it a bit of variation. Um, and obviously the, the black craters, I've just um, quickly sprayed a, a black into them as well. So if you can see with the, the tanks, I think that look um, quite effective. And what I'd use them for is like deep snow drifts or anything, or just as fields covered in snow. Um, just to give a bit of difficult um, terrain. <clears throat> and with the hedges, um, they're the basic same ones I always use, but again, I give it a, a spray of white at the top, so you can still see the green and everything on the sides. So that would look like that, again with a vehicle for... So I'm thinking it's looking all right, me, me winter skiing. Uh, what I've done with the trees as well, I haven't got one here, is uh, I dry brushed them white from the top going down so you can still see the green underneath but they got like a white wintry effect and also started on some ruins um, I got um, from Games Workshop as well their uh, technical paint Valhalla and Blizzard um, to try out snow for the first time so you got like you know patches of snow and I think it's worked quite good um, again, the other ruins, I'm ru using the ruins for Russia, uh, where the main buildings you've seen from foreground, that'll be me um, fighting in France and through Europe. But um, yeah, so what I'm going to do with them, again, the other pieces is spray them white from the top and then put the snow effects on. So, so that's where I'm up to with my winter stuff. So please leave uh, comments how you think I'm doing with it and um, please subscribe and um, that's it for now guys and um, remember to make it paint it and play it and i'll see you again soon thanks a lot bye